Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Biff Palmer, and I'm a professor of internal medicine here at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. And I'm Dr. Deborah Clegg. I'm a professor of internal medicine at UCLA and Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And we are our co-authors of a paper entitled, Ingesting a High Potassium Intake, a Paleolithic Diet Without the Toxicity. And one of the reasons we became interested in this are some recent guidelines that have been published with regards to nutritional recommendations. Yes, there are new USDA guidelines that provide nutritional recommendations specifically for nutrients, not only that are in excess, but also are considered to be nutrients of concern. And surprisingly, potassium is actually denoted as a nutrient of concern. And it's quite interesting. One of the things we talk about in our paper is that there's evidence that Stone Age man actually ingested about 15,000 milligrams of potassium a day, nearly four times what we ingest at the current time. And about 10,000 years ago, with the onset of agriculture and the subsequent development of processing of food, there's been a progressive decline in potassium intake and a progressive increase in dietary sodium. And this mismatch between what arguably is the evolutionary design of the kidney, that is to handle a lot of potassium, and the current diet, which is low in potassium, has been associated with uh, diseases, at least in epidemiologic studies. One of the things we talk about in our paper is that the normal kidney really has a tremendous capacity to excrete potassium, potassium whenever dietary potassium intake is high. And we comment on some recent data that actually has identified within the distal nephron a sensing capacity whereby dietary potassium can lead to increases in urinary excretion even without a change in serum concentration or a change in mineralocorticoid activity. In addition, we also cite evidence of a sensing mechanism that exists within the stomach that can actually signal the kidney to augment renal potassium secretion even without a change in blood potassium or once again without a change in mineralocorticoid activity. So again, the evolutionary design characteristic of the normal kidney appears to be one in which there's a prodigious capacity to excrete dietary K. And one of the things we then talk about is what is the consequences then of ingesting a low potassium diet? And there are many negative consequences. And actually, what you could flip it on the other side and say that there are some positive consequences associated with eating a diet that's actually elevated in potassium. Specifically, there's improvements in overall blood uh, pressure. There's also improvements in uh, reduction in overall stone formation, improvements in acid-base balance. These are things that actually are normally associated with consuming diets that are high in potassium. So in addition to talking about some of the health benefits, we then, in our paper, ask the question, what about the patients who do not have normal kidneys? The standard of care, obviously, in the setting of chronic kidney disease is to restrict dietary potassium. And one might ask, are we withholding a potential therapeutic benefit in terms of diet by restricting dietary potassium in that setting? Obviously, the reason we do so is to prevent life-threatening hyperkalemia. The risk for that is increased because patients with chronic kidney disease are frequently taking drugs that impair renal potassium secretion. But we now have drugs that are available that might, in fact, allow us to test whether a high potassium intake could be a benefit. Exactly. So there are two new drugs. One is, has already been approved by the FDA, and the other is waiting pending approval. And these drugs actually align to potassium, and they, they actually help people who have hyperkalemia. And we think that this might be an interesting time to relook at potassium as an important cation. We have to understand that there are these medical benefits associated with eating diets that are high in potassium. We typically restrict this important nutrient from individuals, and yet at, at the same time, maybe with these new drugs, we can actually start to liberalize the diet a bit and actually afford them the benefits of eating a potassium-enriched diet. And there are indeed some small studies that would suggest a potassium-enriched diet has benefits in the CKD population. For example, a plant-based diet administered to patients with impaired kidney function is associated with less elevations in their serum phosphorus. And there's also a beneficial effect in terms of controlling the degree of metabolic acidosis, almost equivalent to what's been shown with the use of a sodium bicarbonate tablet. So these are issues that uh, warrant, again, examining whether a high K intake could be given to patients with chronic kidney disease and avoid hyperkalemia with the use of these new potassium binding drugs. So I would conclude by saying that uh, this is really a timely article, particularly given recent nutritional guidelines 
and with the advent of new potassium binding drugs to be able to test the hypothesis of whether or not chronic kidney disease patients might enjoy the cardiovascular benefits of a high potassium intake. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.